let's talk about the rate of return you can get by delaying your social security benefits. So I think I really like thinking about um, delaying social security benefits in terms of what kind of return it generates. For many of those considering whether to take it early or delay, they often have other financial assets. So if they keep that money in let's say a retirement account, it's allowed to continue to grow at whatever their kind of investment rate is. Uh, my name is Scott Caulfield. I'm a CPA and a CFA charter holder and the founder of Sophos Wealth Management. So let's look at a couple uh, internal rate of return calculations on delaying social security. Now this chart comes from Michael Kitsis of the Nerd's Eye View. He does a great job covering a lot of financial planning topics. What you're first gonna see in this first chart is the IRR of delaying social security. So taking it at age 70, as opposed to taking it early at age 62. Not surprisingly, the internal rate of return, that's the IRR, is deeply negative the first few years. Um, the, the difference between getting something and nothing. So for those with short life expectancies, the, the internal rate of return is gonna be way higher. You're gonna be way better off taking social security early. As you see, once it gets close to um, around 16, 17 years, you kind of hit that break even, and then the internal rate of return on delaying is now positive. Now, one of the things to think about with these internal rate of returns is just because the return is positive, that doesn't mean it's the best option because you have other investments you can do out there. So let's say you had money in that IRA account that you're allowed to keep growing because you took it early. Is it better to get a 1% internal rate of return on delaying social security, or are you earning a higher hurdle out there in your investment account? I would hope that you're going to beat that 1% return. Now, if we look at what the real IRR is, so that would be inflation adjust or after inflation number, this is where it kind of gets interesting. What happens after you go past the break even point? Around 18 to 19 years in terms of real IRR is where we cross into positive territory. So again, for anybody with the ability to invest the differential, if it's less than 18 years, they're going to always be better off um, taking social security early and investing the difference. But once we get past 18 years, it starts to go positive. And in particular, what you're seeing is in years like 24, 25, 26, we're getting over a 4% uh, real internal rate of return, which is pretty attractive. I mean, this is a guaranteed return if you know you're going to live at least that long. And especially as we get into the 30 plus years, um, you know, we get close to a hundred year life expectancy, the internal rate of return is over 6%. Now, considering that historically the stock market has returned 7% real, roughly, um, uh, six, six and a half percent guaranteed return is very attractive, but that assumes that you will live till close to a hundred. Uh, so a lot of factors for you to consider in your own personal retirement. You know, what is your longevity? Are you going to be able to actually invest and earn these um, attractive internal rates of return? Are you going to have good behavior with investments? You know, for some people, just because you can hypothetically earn five, six, seven percent real returns, a lot of people are going to cash that out and take a trip or do this or do that. So um, there might be sort of an insurance-like benefit to delaying social uh, to delaying social security. Uh, anyways, always happy to talk about your social security situation. Um, and please like and subscribe this uh, to my channel. Appreciate it.